Okay, assalamu alaikum. It's good to see a lot of people in here. When we first came here, it was really empty. So good move to ask people to move down. Fantastic. Okay. I've been asked to speak about life coaching, but given what's gone before, I'm not sure how it's going to fit in. Okay, it's been a really exciting stuff that has been put forward today. Mashallah, and the amount of knowledge that has been shared just in the past hour and a half, it's just blow, it's mind blowing. So I do hope that you'll find some use from my 10 minute um, in contribution today. Okay, my name's Aziza White. I am a professional life coach. I've recently set up a company called Living for Success. Um, my interest in life coaching happened um, back in 2011 when I attended a free weekend seminar by the Coaching Academy. Um, I was really excited by what life coaching could do for individuals and communities as well because at the end of the day we're all individuals coming together collectively so if we're working on ourselves as a community, as a group, we will be really effective. So what really attracted me to profession was the empowering nature of the process. Really, really empowering. And enabling the client to come up with the solutions for their life. So you're not giving them the answers. Also, it helped me with using the skills that I already have, because by profession, I work in HR. So it was using my skills in a different way. And just really the excitement that I had from supporting people to achieve the things that they want to in their lives. So I decided to sign up for the full course. Didn't know how I was going to pay for it. Just put my trust in Allah. And alhamdulillah, I trained as a coach with the help of my relatives. So that's a bit of background about me. So what is coaching? Does anybody know about coaching in the room? Just raise your hands. Anybody have an idea? Anybody use the coach? Anybody is, a, is anybody actually a coach? Yeah, fantastic. So I've got one person, so you can vouch what I'm saying. Okay. So what is coaching? Coaching is a profession that helps others to create change in their lives. Essentially, it's about focusing on the future because you're setting goals. Yeah, you're setting goals and you're learning from the past. A bit was mentioned about our failures. Yeah, it's about looking at the past, learning from what has happened. There's a saying, there's no such thing as failures if you look at it in a different way. Okay, so I define coaching as a collaborative partnership between the client and the coach, where the coach supports the client to realize their potential, because Allah has given us a lot. He's given us ever so much. I mean, look what we've done here today. You know, look at all the inventions that man has made over the years. You know, it's absolutely amazing. So realizing our potential, developing and achieving success in professional and personal life. So that is what the coaching relationship is about. So as a coach, what do I give to my clients? How do I make this happen? Well, I give them that space where I really listen to them. Yeah, so it's listening to people at different levels. Not just what you're saying, but what is not being said. Because there's a lot in what isn't being said that you can get a clue as to where, what needs to happen. So it's about building rapport, building that trust, understanding the client's world. Where are they coming from? What do they want to achieve? I also ask powerful and insightful questions. Questions that get you to think. Think in a different way. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. So it's about doing things in a different way and seeing what result can come out of that. I use feedback, which can be from evidence, as well as observing what is actually happening with the client. And also, we can use some exercises. So that's really about the coaching relationship and the tools I use as a coach. So what are the benefits? I believe there are many, many benefits to coaching, but I'll just touch on a few which I feel are key. As I mentioned earlier, what attracted me to the profession was this whole process of empowerment. Now for me, empowerment is all about the client and how they can take responsibility, ability to respond to any situation thereby taking back their own personal power to decide and to act rather than blaming others and circumstances for what is happening in their lives. So what does that mean? What, really, what does that mean? How many times do we say, well, it's that situation over here. I want to come here because I want to fix that person over here, but we're not looking at ourselves. We have to look at ourselves first and foremost and take back all that power that Allah has given us back where it belongs, right here. 
So the client sets the agenda. I don't tell you what you need to do. You come and tell me what you want. What is it that you want to be, do, or have in this world? Yeah? So you set the agenda. I help you clarify your goals. I help you set those goals and the values that are important to you. Because again, so often we're doing things based on what other people want us to do. Yeah, it's not what we really, truly want. I help to keep the client on track as well, having a sense of accountability. Because you know, when you know somebody's, you, you have to come back to somebody with some kind of feedback and tell them what you've been up to, it's a different kind of motivation than when you're just trying to do things on your own. The focus really is on the client learning and finding their own solutions rather than me giving advice. You are the expert and it's not my role to give you the answers. Again, learning from your failures, well, so-called failures, learning from mistakes, so-called mistakes. If these things didn't happen, how would we know what the better solution is, what a different way to do things, you know, in terms of how to think about a different way to do things. Okay. So another benefit is awareness of yourself. Because until you have self-awareness, you cannot do a thing about what really is happening in your lives. Again, as I said before, you will keep on doing the same thing and expect a different result. That then leads to stress, anxiety, depression, frustration, blaming everybody out there, blaming everybody else out there, and the situation out there. It's the government, it's the education system, it's my teacher, it's my mum, my dad, my wife, my son. That's what's happening. No, it's about your awareness of yourself. And when you have that awareness of yourself, you understand your strengths, your positive aspects, as well as your weaknesses, and the limits and the beliefs that you have, which may be limiting you. So one of the things that we would work through, what I work through with the client is, what beliefs are limiting you and how do you need to make a shift? Yeah? How many times have you looked at a situation in a different way and had a different result? Raise your hands if it's ever happened. It's happened to me many a times. And nothing's actually changed in the situation, it's just up here. Yeah? So we have to be aware of how beliefs may be expanding or limiting what we're doing in our lives. So another benefit of coaching is raising self-belief, confidence and esteem. Again, it's fundamental, you know, so this can come up in different areas of your life. You may be confident in one area and maybe not in another area. But if you don't have self-belief and self-esteem, i.e. the way you value yourself, how are you going to teach that to your children? How are you going to show that to your colleagues um, at work? How are you going to give a positive uh, uh, example of your Islam. You have to have self-esteem. You have to have some kind of self-belief. And the other thing is, the other benefit is motivation. You know, again, if you've got somebody working alongside you, raising your self-esteem, you know, your self-awareness is heightened, and sometimes you just need that motivation to keep you going. Because they understand you, the coach understands you. They understand what gets you going. When you forget why you're doing it, they will remind you. So those are some of the benefits of coaching um, that I've seen with my clients. Um, and I know that it has a massive potential for us as individuals, but also as a community. Because I can coach this room. I can do a group coaching session right here, right now. Yeah? And so it's not just about one-to-one -one interaction. We can do it as a group. It can be of use to young people. I think probably the qualifying age to be coached is about six years old. I've got colleagues who are coaching children at primary school, getting to look at the things that they're going through. Often the parents complain about the child being, you know, resistant and this, that, what have you. But that's the parent's view. You need to look at what's going on with the child. Um, coaching can be applied to different communities. In the Islamic, you know, for us as Muslims, we know about coaching anyway. We have, you know, our examples here. They're, coach, they're coaching us. They're giving us those hard questions to reflect on ourselves. But this is just really making it into that professional one-to-one -one or group situation. Okay. Um, any questions on what I've said so far? I mean, I know we've done a lot of listening, alhamdulillah, but I would like to take any questions. Um, how does cognitive thinking, how could you tie it into, like, with using Islam as a part of cognitive thinking? 
You'd have to do. Look, I, I don't do with big words. Okay? What you're discussing is cognitive thinking. How to how to see the world in different ways. Put it in plain English. Yeah. Yeah. Put it in plain English. The cognitive thinking. Plain English. Well, it's using your mind in order to change how you see things. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I'm I'm, I'm a very big um, fan of that um, yeah. in terms of because I believe you are what you think. Yeah. You know, Allah has given us this amazing mind that we underutilize because we're stuck in our habits we're stuck in our usual way of doing things we see things from a perspective that is often limited um, and I believe that it's fundamental to exercise that brain to exercise that mind that we have blessed have been blessed with if you don't use it you lose it simple as that just like your muscles if you don't exercise if you just lay down in bed all day you lose your muscles same with the mind and it's your mind that is the fuel, that is what will enable you to change. That is what keeps you stuck or, keep, or, or enables you to expand. So most definitely, it's fundamental in terms of how, you know, cognitively, how you're dealing with things in this lifetime. That is often the fundamental um, a reason for stress and depression. Because you stay in one state and you never see another way ever. But I've seen circumstances, I've worked with people who've been through very difficult circumstances. Events have happened to them, they've stayed like that for a number of years and I've worked them and turned it around and they've made small steps in their life to give them that confidence that they can actually make that change. You're very welcome. Okay, all right, thank you very much for listening to me, thank you.